Welcome back to uh, court number two here from uh, Yonex Denmark Open. Ready for the men's doubles. Uh, Korea uh, against uh, Germany. And uh, Korea with the best start. One point lead, one to zero. Kim ki uh, Kim Sarang against Michael Fuchs and uh, Oliver Roth. And uh, Christian Skorbo, uh, you are sitting next to me uh, doing this match. What can we expect from, uh, from those two teams here? Yeah, I think we can expect uh, an OK match. Uh, the Germans played well yesterday and, uh, and won. And uh, I didn't really see how the Koreans played, but um, I, I think, I think uh, the two Koreans are big favorites to win this match. Uh, so uh, I think we will see them dominating it and uh, Putin all trying to, uh, to follow up with the pace. Uh, First point for the Germans. And Christian, we've got a lot of questions. Are you ready for answering something here? Yes. Of course. Let's begin from uh, the top. And uh, we have a, a question uh, regarding Koreans and the, defense, uh, the defensive kind of uh, style. Um, it's a question from Joseph Kim from uh, Wales was asking, what kind of training do the Koreans do to have such a good defense? Uh, to be honest, I actually don't know. No. Uh, they're just they're making, uh, doing a lot of uh, exercises where you have, where the defense has to be fast. So not, not usually uh, only with long lifts in the defense, but where there's a lot of pressure and you need to be moving fast on your feet and you need to be, have your racket ready all the time. I think I, I, my my guess would be that that's what they're doing, and then um, they just they've done it since uh, they were yeah very 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 young. So um, it's it's just a trademark for Korea to have a fantastic defense, and um, that's uh, that's very inspiring for all of us all of us Danes to uh, to get a, as good a defense they they have because um, it is very good. And also welcome to you who's listening to us on the Unix Denmark Open Radio 95.3 on the FN channel. Also you are welcome to ask us questions if you like. Another <coughs> question from uh, Sanda De Rice who was asking is badminton the number one sport in Denmark? <laughs> no. uh, for sure not. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Um, in Denmark, the national sport is uh, football. Yeah, soccer. Soccer, yeah. yeah. Let's say soccer. Um, yeah. But European football is, uh, is if it's called like that's yeah. the national sport, and then we also uh, have a sport called the handball. Yeah. That is uh, very very popular in Denmark. Yeah. So badminton is unfortunately not number one, but um, in the top it, top three perhaps. Yeah, maybe top three of of four or something oh, like that. Yeah. We all also have tennis. So. Yeah. But it, it is a popular sport, just not uh, ranked uh, among soccer and handball. And the Germans hang in there. Fuchs and uh, Rhodes. Who beat it, a Chinese pair to uh, reach the second round. In question, that was uh, a bit of a surprise for me. Uh, Xing Su and Gu Xing Dong from China beaten by uh, the Germans yesterday. Yeah, it is a surprise. Uh, now we have seen uh, Chen Su play uh, many times in mixed doubles with Ma Jin. And he's playing, uh, he's very good in mix, but I've never really, uh, I've never really think, I've never really thought he was that great a men's double player. So. No. And uh, Gu Xing Dong is also uh, a, a, good, a well good player and they play a very good doubles, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not that. Um, I'm not impressed by those two as uh, as men's double players. No. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if you think of them coming from China. Yeah. In my opinion, the new pair with uh, Sang Nang and uh, Bao Chai, better pair than uh, than those two guys. Um, Much better pair, yeah. in my opinion. And they're young. Exactly. There's a future for those two. Yeah. But I think uh, it's, a too, it's, a, the, uh, it's too much for Fuchs and Roth to, to win this match. Uh, yeah, they overmatched. The, the Koreans are strong and are not making that many mistakes, and then the defense are very, very good. 
it will be difficult for the Germans to uh, to break the the Korean defense and and and, and win this match. And two young Koreans, uh, Kim Sarang and uh, Kim Ki Young. Yeah. Especially Kim Sarang, we have seen him uh, on the on the Thomas Cup team for uh, for Korea, and we have also seen him on uh, in his partnership with uh, Kim Ki Young. Are they the future stars of uh, of Korea in your book? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I know Kim 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 Ki Young. I've played him uh, a couple of times, both in junior and uh, in senior, and he's uh, he's improved a lot uh, the last couple of years. Kim Sarang, I, I don't really know uh, that much about him, but uh, they they could easily be the new stars of Korean badminton. They have a, a big potential and. Uh, and uh, it's, it's definitely uh, worth uh, following. Question from uh, Huang, who's asking: um, Is it often that a player is tested positive um, for, doping. By, for, for doping? Yeah. Uh, no. No, it's not actually really. not we very have, often. There were, we've had a couple of uh, of uh, incidents, but um, it's not that often that anyone is tested uh, positive for doping. So, and that that's a good news. Yeah, that's very good news. Because that's very good news. There's a lot of tests going on, and I know actually uh, the anti-doping Denmark is here today, uh, yeah. making tests, and and they're, oh. they're here every every single time in, in Denmark, and for sure they will be there, be it, uh, every time there's a tournament going on. Yeah, uh, it's not because the players aren't tested, because we are we are tested. Uh, uh, many times a, a year to uh, make sure that nothing is uh, illegal in the sport. So, how many tests have you been uh, doing the last, yeah, for instance, the year? The last year? Yeah. I have uh, I've done three, I think. Yeah. Three tests and all negative. So yeah. that's 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 a good one. Yeah, of course it is. And no offense, Christian, but the uh, but the top players uh, would be tested more than, than yeah. you would. Definitely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> A question from uh, Esko Asikainen from Finland, who is asking, uh, "What are your best memories of Peter Geller? Um, I can start if uh, you are one oh. a half a minute. Ah, he's okay. It's a slippery, yeah. yeah. Just thought he. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, you start. Yeah, actually, it's it's not something to do with with him on the court. Um, one of my best best memories with Peter was actually one of the first time I met him, because he is he's a very uh, nice guy. And he's nice talking to, and he's also interesting in what I was doing, and uh, why I was doing what I was doing, um, and that was my best moment with with Peter, uh, seeing him as a regularly normal person and not a star who was uh, who was ignorant and uh, and just a star for himself. So that that's my best memory with uh, with Peter. But I think I think that's why he's so popular because he really. Uh He's very good at uh, control, uh, talking to the fans, and uh, and he's open-minded. So uh, he's um, that's one of his qualities. That's why he's so big and uh, as he are.
and they're all almost matched in uh, this game. Yeah. The Germans. Yeah, I think so. I think the Koreans are playing well, not uh, not really not really leaving uh, anything to uh, to the Germans, but it's only the first set, so. I, I think the Germans should. Uh, Talk a lot about in the interval what they will do against this uh, Korean couple because right now it's uh, obviously not uh, working. Uh. Another question, um, Christian from Bernard Howe, and uh, he's asking uh, Would Peter Gade go down into the Danish history books as a legend of Danish badminton like Sven Pri, Fleming Dells, and Alan Cups? He will for sure. For sure. Um, he, uh, I think if we if we look at him in uh, if, we, if we look at badminton in 50 years, uh, he w we will still be talking about him because he is uh, he is a legend. Being on the top uh, in the top uh, yeah, three, top four in yeah, 16 years. So how many years he's been here is. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, maybe his uh, results aren't that good as uh, players like Sven Pri and uh, and Alan Cops and Fleming Dills, but um, oh, oh. but we, we we have to look at uh, which players and yeah, uh, exactly and and and, when, uh, and what type of weapons uh, that the Asians have brought to this game. So yeah. I, I think he's uh, the biggest legend. Uh, we in 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 uh, many years. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Christian, uh, <laughs> a question for you, I think here, from Ace van der Walde. What do you think of those sleeveless T-shirts? <laughs> I know that, that Jonix is producing uh, sleeveless shirts, right? Yeah, they yeah, are. and you tried it, I, I suppose. Uh, yeah, the because uh, Jonix is my sponsor, so of course they want me to play in them and show them off. But uh, I, don't know, I think they're okay. They're nice to play in. It, it feels a little bit more free, actually, but it's also annoying because you don't have a sleeve to wipe off sweat. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a little bit different. What uh, well, what people like and what people want to play in, but I, I think it's okay, and then the looks are also okay. Uh, it's just a modernizing type of uh, clothing to badminton, so that's a good idea, I think. Yeah. And game for, for the Koreans, 2016. White. On court number one, Danish China Bowen against Luke Jan Poon from Hong Kong, China. 19-11 for China Bowen in the second game, winning the first one. Match point for China Bowen, 20-11. Actually, Michael Fuchs with the service, 17-20. First game for Kim Saran, Kim Ki Jung, and the top end of uh, this game for Michael Fuchs. So it's fault from uh, the German. Yeah, not not a good way to end uh, this this first game for uh, for Fuchs. No, but it happens uh, that you make service fault, so you can't really do anything about it. Just. Yeah, yeah, nowadays the service has have, has to be uh, so sharp and it has to be perfectly close to the net. And if it's not that, you you will get under pressure. So sometimes you make service calls and uh, and you can't really do anything about it other than, other than uh, getting on to the next uh, rather. Uh, as you may begin here, Tina Baum ready for uh, the quarterfinals for tomorrow. We'll be playing uh, Saina Nival from uh, India. Tough opponent for uh, Patina on that one, Christian. 
Yeah, definitely. Saina has played uh, amazing this uh, whole this whole season and won uh, and also last season and won some uh, some big tournaments. So uh, very very tough for Tina and. Um, I watched a little of the match here, and I think she struggled a bit uh, with with her game and her and her and her movements. But she overcame it and, and won it uh, fairly easy in two set. New question for you uh, here, Christian, as a player from uh, Gary Bates, England. In the last six years since it's at since its adoption. Do you think the rally point scoring system has succeeded in making the game more understandable for television viewers and bringing back to a wider, wider, to a wider audience? Uh, yeah, that's uh, a very good question yeah, because um, that's uh, a big debate going on what to uh, about the system and is it working and is it not? But uh, to make it more uh, view, more um, enjoyable for the t for the TV, I think it's a, a great idea because the it, it, it creates some more excitement and uh, more uh, underdogs can beat the beat the, the favorites. So um, and if, if you're just uh, not focused for a couple of rallies, suddenly you will be behind by four and five points, and that's a lot in this system. So um, we see a lot more three pointers. Than we uh, than we did in uh, in the in the old rally point scoring system. So, so you're a fan? I like it. Uh, it, it of course, it's uh, difficult because you have to be 100% ready all the time as a player. But uh, it, it makes makes it more uh, tense and uh, and uh, that that's that's great for the sport. I think I think oh! it's uh, it, it has made the the sport. Um, Easier to understand, so you don't have to think about second and first server and uh, especially in doubles. So that, that's that's a, a great idea, I think. And the Germans in the lead here in the beginning of the second game. And once again. Uh, an okay defense for uh, for the Koreans. Always seems calm when they are standing in defense. Yeah, even though they're young, they have trained it uh, so many hours already. So they are pretty calm. Uh, and, and the problem for the German is that the attack isn't really that dangerous. Then none of them is really hitting it hard. So uh, it's easy for the Koreans to uh, to control the defense. Um, I think the uh, Germans should try and push a little bit more forward and uh, put some more pressure on and, 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 and still play with short shots and get the lifts but uh, build it up from the back line and not uh, hitting it hard but it is difficult playing against the uh, Koreans you have to be so patient and uh, and then you, you have to be uh, be aware of uh, be aware of working uh, very, very hard every rally. Otherwise, uh, it, it, you, it's, it, it, you, it's nearly impossible to, to beat the Koreans if, if you don't, uh, if you're not, if your mind isn't set to work hard. Yeah, but also be patient, right? Uh, just, just don't smack it all the time. You also have to to bring some variations. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Earlier, you had a member of the Danish national team with you. If you're still there, I was wondering. That's for you, Christian. Yeah. What is your favorite aspect of badminton? Hmm. You're living for it, so. Yeah, I know. But it's not a. It's, it's not something that I speculate about every day. What my favorite aspect about badminton are, but. Um, Okay, uh, just a second. Yeah, the, the, the greatest aspect uh, for me is the is the intense moments on court where you uh, fight against others, uh, not physically but uh, mentally and um, and and um, in in badminton to to win. And uh, that's not on court, but in actually in every day that you fight to get better and you fight to reach the, the world's uh, the world top. Um, 
if just if I have to see in bap say in badminton, it's, it's difficult to say, but uh, yeah. And it's it's difficult for me to see what what, what they have to change the the Germans for for getting back to this game. Yeah, as I, as I said, uh, I think they should uh, try and be more aggressive in the first three shots. Uh, take some chances and go for it to just to put some pressure on the Koreans and uh, and get the attack more. Now they're just uh, playing defense and playing these flat lifts, and that's not the way to be to beat Koreans. Can you, see, you can see they're just controlling it and they are uh, making it hard for the Germans. I, I, I would, if I was them, I would try and uh, put even more pressure on the on the first uh, three, four, five shots and uh, finish off the uh, finish off the rally in uh, before it comes out to the very long uh, long rallies no! like that. Great from uh, Fox. They, they need to get some fast point as well, because if you have to work hard for every point, you, you, it's very tough mentally. Uh, you, need, you need to go for some fast points as well, and and um, and that's exactly what Fuchs just did here. But the Germans aren't uh, the type of players that is uh, going so much for the service and returns. They are more players who wants to get it in play and then play the rally. Uh, and, and, and that's also a very fine, uh, fine thing to do. But against uh, these two careers, I just think it's uh, not the right thing to do because because they are just way better at playing the rallies than the Germans are. So maybe finishing it off faster would be a good idea for them. Christian, another question, um, also of one of a thing I'm I'm dreaming about. Um, it's Kelvin Ho who is asking us, uh, what do you think about a team match between 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 China and the rest of the world? Uh, we know from golf with the Ryder Cup. Um, yeah, funny uh, funny thing to try. I haven't even I haven't really thought about doing it, uh, but um, as we know, all know China is uh, dominating badminton right now, uh, and uh, it, they are difficult to beat even for for any nation. Uh, the rest of the world against China, uh, maybe yeah, but um, otherwise, much you should try uh, Europe against China, Europe against. Asia maybe or something like that. Yeah. Instead, that could be more fun, fun to watch than all, the whole world against China. Because uh, I think even though that uh, if if you put in uh, Europe against uh, Europe, Europe against Asia, it probably only would be uh, Lee Chung Wai and maybe some lady singles to you could put in, maybe a men's doubles. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be that uh, different from uh, the world against China. And we have to play a lot of matches to go down in the line of players that uh, will be weak for uh, for China. Yeah. Also, if we have to play all the five categories, then we need to play a lot of matches before it uh, it gets even. Exactly. So to speak. Exactly. But an interesting thought, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Also because it's it's a huge. Uh, success every time uh, we have a Ryder Cup in in golfing. Yeah, it is a huge success. Uh, 
It is a big, big event Ryder Cup. I watched it this year. Yeah, yeah. I know you. You're kind of nerd, isn't you? Yeah, a little bit. I, yeah. I, I love golf and I play golf myself. So uh, I, I think I watched nearly the whole thing. And that was uh, very, very interesting for me. And I know a lot of uh, badminton players uh, love playing golf uh, as a hobby because it's... Uh, we, we can stress out, we can uh, relax and get out in the nature and uh, relax and that's uh, and still do something competitive and that's uh, mm -hmm. that's very good for us fans and players. So we are, we are many who are Danes who like uh, that as a hobby. Who's the best on the Danish national uh, team uh, playing golf? <laughs> uh, in the national team right now, uh, yeah. it's me. <laughs> it's you? <laughs> yeah. But we have uh, we, we, we have some low handicaps, all of us. So we are we are pretty even. Who, who are good? Uh, yeah, Jan Jørgensen plays well, and uh, Rasmus Bunde and Mas Conrad, and uh, are we, um, and me, and uh, I know Peter Gell also used to play, and um, we we are a couple. Kenneth Jonasson from the English uh, national team. Coaching, he is also playing. So, so there are a couple of players uh, who's uh, who's playing that. Do you bring your golf bag with you when you travel to Asia, for instance? No, 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 no never. We, it's, it's all about. Uh, it's all about badminton. Yeah. Uh, it's only when we um, when there's a little bit time left uh, and we have to relax and we're not playing tournaments and everything. So then we have uh, the time to go out and uh, and, and play and uh, get our minds away from everything. That's a good way to uh, to. To stress out. 18 8. 10 point lead for Kim Kiyong. Kim Sarang, no problem at all taking uh, the lead in the game and uh, getting the job done. The two Koreans. Point for uh, Kim Ki Young, Kim Sarang. We have got some small uh, changes on the schedule for our court because we are a bit behind the schedule, or a lot behind the schedule actually. Um, one of our matches has been moved on to court number one. Patipa and Savitri against the Sangnang Saoyun Lai. But we still have two matches to go here on our court. Robert Matushek and Nadia Stasiba next. Uh, on the court against uh, Chin and Eom from uh, Korea. But first of all, we need to get the men's double done, folks. And road against Kim Sarang, Kim Ki Young. Twenty-one seventeen, twenty-one ten for Kim Ki Young, Kim Sarang. We'll take a short break, and after that, we're ready for the mixed doubles.